on World News Tonight. Global economic crisis. Multiple stock markets across the world record newfound lows with the United States looking at a potential recession. Crypto control. South Korea looks at regulating its cryptocurrency market as the major players see a downward trend worldwide. Walking on thin ice. Emmanuel Macron faces a questionable parliamentary election with no signs of a certain majority after the first round. And the art of motion. A festival of free running comes to a close in Greece with some memorable sights. Good evening, thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. A lot of news to report to you, a lot of news related to the economy. We start off from the Wall Street. The Wall Street has entered a bear market, which is a condition that occurs when securities fall below 20%. This, coupled with rising inflation, has pushed the Federal Reserve to revise its interest rates. As the common man and woman in the United States are struggling to make ends meet, fears are growing in the U.S. for a possible recession. Gloom and red arrows on Wall Street today as sky-high inflation and a potential recession weigh heavily on investors. After being down 1,000 points, the Dow closed down 876 today, now down 16% for the year. The tech and biotech-heavy Nasdaq down 30% year-to-date. And the broader S&P index, common in Americans' portfolios, sliding into bear market territory, down 21% year-to-date. All of it real money for Americans saving for their retirement, college savings, or a new home. To tame 40-year high inflation, the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates again on Wednesday, perhaps by another three-quarters of a point. It comes as inflation is forcing Americans to adjust their spending. From Los Angeles... Road trips, there's no way. It's just ridiculous. It's cheaper to fly. To Boston. It feels like you can't catch a break almost. Where Sophia Lee is parking the car, riding her bike to work, and even babysitting to offset skyrocketing gas and food prices. It's just difficult to save up for the things that I do need in the long term. An economy, a country increasingly on edge. Now, new scrutiny arises around the conditions of an Abbott Nutrition baby formula plant before the closure in February that accelerated a critical formula shortage. Tonight, we get you the latest. Just as a major baby formula plant starts up production again, tonight, new scrutiny around conditions there before the closure of an Abbott Nutrition site in February that accelerated a critical formula shortage. These are the shelves. According to federal records reported by the Associated Press, the Abbott site went unchecked for two years. Then last fall, inspectors found standing water and inadequate hand washing, but never issued a formal warning. Just months later, the plant was voluntarily closed, according to the FDA, due to bacterial contamination. The AP reports the three biggest baby formula manufacturers weren't inspected at all during 2020. The Food and Drug Administration has said it's committed to annual inspections, but that tendency was derailed by the pandemic. The FDA told the AP it skipped about 15,000 U.S. inspections because of COVID, though it has already made up a third of those. The agency telling last week, our top priority right now is addressing the dire need for infant formula in the U.S. market, going on to say, including ensuring Abbott takes the appropriate corrective action to address insanitary conditions observed by the FDA. At the end of May, out-of-stock rates of baby formula soared to 74% nationally, according to Data Assembly, with one in five states almost completely out of formula. Many families hope outside help will ease the desperate scramble for the critical food source. 95,000 tins of baby formula were flown in from Australia Sunday, with millions of more bottles on the way this month. Over to the United Kingdom now, Britain's GDP contracted by 0.3% in April, adding to fears of a sharp slowdown. Just three days before the Bank of England announces the scale of its latest interest rate response to the surge in inflation. Britain could be sliding closer to recession. New figures out Monday showed the country's economy unexpectedly shrank in April. GDP contracted by 0.3% when economists had expected it to eke out growth. The Office for National Statistics said that might have been the case, but for reduced government spending on health crisis measures. Rising prices are the big worry now, and not just for shoppers. 
Many firms said increases in the cost of production had affected their business. Meanwhile, soaring energy costs and a recent tax increase are squeezing spending power for families. Finance Minister Rishi Sunak says the UK isn't alone in facing such problems. He's already unveiled more support for households and is expected to announce further measures later in the year. However, the outlook for growth looks grim. Monday saw the Confederation of British Industry warn of stagnation and possibly a recession. That may not stop the Bank of England from raising rates on Thursday, though. Policymakers feel compelled to act, with inflation forecast to exceed 10% in the final quarter of the year. Most economists expect another quarter percentage point rate increase this week. Over to Australia now. Australian shares recorded their biggest fall in more than two years, dragged lower by growing concerns of interest rate hikes leading to a global recession. Over in Japan, the Nikkei stock index was down by 1.32%, having fallen as much as 2% earlier in the session. At its worst point today, the Australian share market had given up as much as $112 billion, making it easily the worst day we've had in more than two years and leaving analysts with just one word. Carnage. One word, it is carnage. All sectors have been hit as the ASX 200 follows Wall Street into deep losses. The market hit leaving mum and dad investors and self-funded retirees like Jenny counting the significant cost. It's worrying because we're an older age group and we wonder whether we've got time left to, for things to go back to where they were before. We've got no control so we just have to hope for the best that things improve. There's no doubt you can't get away from what has happened today. It is an absolute indiscriminate movement. Everything has felt it. Banks, miners, tech, growth, defensive, it doesn't matter. Today has been indiscriminate. The sell-off comes after the market was closed yesterday, leaving investors to play catch-up on worsening economic news. New economic data released overnight shows US inflation is now running at a 41-year high, setting off global concerns that interest rate hikes designed to get that inflation under control could be hard enough to send us into a recession. Over in South Korea, the government of South Korea has called on the crypto market to come up with regulations and safety mechanisms to protect investors as assets in the market exceed 40 billion US dollars. South Korea's crypto assets market currently stands at 55.2 trillion Korean won, or roughly 46 billion US dollars. The 24 licensed cryptocurrency exchanges see an average of 11.3 trillion won, or $8.7 billion in transactions every day. The numbers show the market's explosive growth over recent years. However, despite such growth, there aren't sufficient regulations in place for the industry. So the government and the ruling People Power Party met on Monday to call on the industry to come up with voluntary regulatory measures. They're even thinking about new laws for blockchain-based platforms. In fact, many other countries are looking into the impact of digital assets on the overall financial system, investors, and economic policy directions. So with over a dozen crypto market-related bills pending in the National Assembly now, the Financial Services Commission is also going to help out in coming up with legislations to protect investors from swings in the crypto assets markets. The latest discussions follow last month's crash of the Terra stablecoin and its sister coin Luna. Investors saw massive losses from that crash. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now over in France, with the first round of ballots counted, President Emmanuel Macron has just one week to convince voters to return a centrist majority to parliament for his second term as president. President Emmanuel Macron could lose his outright majority in France's parliament and the power to push through his economic reform agenda after a strong showing by a new left-wing alliance in the first round of voting. Abstentions were at a record high. Macron's bloc and the NUPES coalition, led by hard-left veteran Jean-Luc Mélenchon, each won 26% of the vote on Sunday, though it is next Sunday's runoff that will determine the allocation of seats. Macron's supporters are expected to extend their lead. Mélenchon casts Macron as a free marketeer, 
protecting the wealthy instead of hard-up families, as rampant inflation pushes up the cost of living and erodes wages. Macron was re-elected in April, but to pursue his contested reform agenda, especially raising the retirement age, he needs allies in Parliament. An absolute majority would give him free reign to push it through. But if his ensemble alliance loses its outright majority, the president will be forced into making messy pacts with centre-right or centre-left factions on a bill-by-bill -bill basis. That could hobble him in his second term. Another scenario is if Mélenchon's Nupes won a ruling majority in the National Assembly, defying opinion polls. That would usher in a rare period of so-called cohabitation, where the president and prime minister come from different camps. Macron would hold fewer levers of power, upending his agenda. If he refused to name Mélenchon as prime minister, it could also lead to a power struggle. Sunday's first round result took France's pulse but its two-round voting system is designed to bring stability. And ultimately, that's likely to favour Macron. The first deportation flight of migrants from Britain to Rwanda can go ahead after judges in the United Kingdom threw out last-minute efforts by human rights groups and campaigners to stop the practice. As part of an initial 148 million US dollar deal with Rwanda, Britain will send some migrants who arrived illegally by crossing the channel in small boats from Europe. Britain will be sending its first flight of asylum seekers to Rwanda on Tuesday after judges threw out last ditch attempts by campaigners to stop the plan. As part of a near $150 million deal, Britain will send to Rwanda some migrants who arrived illegally from Europe by crossing the channel in small boats. Britain's Conservative government says the deportations will help stop the flow of migrants and deal a blow to people smuggling networks. On Monday, the UN's High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, slammed the policy. The UK says, you know, we do this to save people from dangerous journeys. Let me doubt that a little bit. The, I mean, saving people from dangerous journeys is great, is absolutely great. But is that the right way to do it? Is that the right, is that the real motivation for this uh, deal to happen? I don't think so. On Friday, a high court judge refused to grant an injunction to block the flight. That decision was upheld Monday by three justices on the Court of Appeal. A second legal challenge at the High Court was also rejected, with the judge noting that everyone had been given access to a lawyer to challenge their deportation. Initially, some 37 individuals were to be removed on the first flight, but charity Kerfa Calais said that number has dwindled to just eight. Three more individuals will have their cases heard on Tuesday morning. A full hearing to determine the legality of the policy as a whole is due in July. Over to China now, authorities in China's capital, Beijing, raced to contain a COVID-19 outbreak traced to a raucous 24-hour bar known for cheap liquor and big crowds, with millions facing mandatory testing and thousands under targeted lockdowns. This is where a cluster of COVID-19 cases has been found in Beijing. The 24-hour heaven supermarket bar known for cheap liquor and big crowds. It had just reopened as curbs in the Chinese capital east last week. Authorities are now racing to contain the outbreak. Millions are facing mandatory testing and thousands are under targeted lockdowns. Nearly 200 cases were linked to the bar since June 9th. Officials have said people infected live or work in 14 of the capital's 16 districts. Authorities have described the outbreak as ferocious and explosive. The re-emergence of COVID infections highlights how hard it will be for China to make a success of its zero-COVID policy and raises new concerns about the outlook for the world's second-largest economy. Chaoyang, where the bar cluster was discovered, kicked off a three-day mass testing campaign among its roughly 3.5 million residents on Monday. About 10,000 close contacts of the bar's patrons have been identified and their residential buildings put under lockdown. Some planned school reopenings in the district have also been postponed. Officials have not commented on the exact cause of the bar outbreak, 
nor explained why they are not yet reinstating the level of curbs seen last month. We have some good news for you. Cancer is one of the leading causes of death globally. While many different treatments have been developed over the years, there is still no total cure for the disease, leaving even treated patients at risk of their cancer returning. Recently though, a new type of anti-cancer treatment has been developed that uses a virus to destroy cancer cells. CAR T cell therapy is where immune cells are made to find and destroy cancer cells. While this type of treatment can help treat some types of cancer, for some cancer patients, there remains a high risk of recurrence. On the surface of cancer cells, there's a biomarker called CD19, which acts as a target for cancer therapy. But this is eliminated in the initial CAR T cell therapy process, leading to recurrence. To address this limitation, a new type of CAR T cancer therapy targets two different biomarkers. Cancer cells that don't have the CD19 or the CD22 biomarkers, one solution is if a CAR T cell treatment is developed that can target both such markers, it would increase the cancer cells' reactions. A Korean research team has recently completed a patent application for this type of CAR T treatment and is ready to start human clinical trials. Another research team is developing an anti-cancer virus treatment, which uses viruses to destroy cancer cells. This virus treatment method alters the genes inside the T cells to help them attack the cancer. The virus contains genes that trigger the treatment. As the treatment gene inside causes the anti-cancer virus cells to multiply, other internal genes also multiply. This leads to production of high concentrations of therapeutic protein within the cancer cells. The research team plans to apply for clinical trials both in the United States and in Korea this coming August. As these new anti-cancer methods and technology get developed, there is hope we can speed up the fight against cancer. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Australia's substitute goalkeeper Andrew Redmayne saved the last penalty to clinch a place at this year's World Cup in Qatar as his team edged Peru 5-4 in a shootout following a draw after extra time in an intercontinental playoff. Australia will play in Group D at the World Cup with holders France, Denmark and Tunisia. The finals run from November 21st to December 18th. The performer and producer Jennifer Hudson has joined the elite group of EGOT winners with a victory at the Tony Awards. Known as United States Entertainment's Grand Slam, the illustrious acronym EGOT signifies a recipient of an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar and a Tony. Hudson received her Tony as one of the producers of A Strange Loop, which was named Best Musical at the ceremony at Radio City Music Hall. Dozens of companies, including Spotify, Yelp and DuckDuckGo, are sending a letter to U.S. Senators urging them to support a bill aimed at reigning in the biggest tech companies, such as Amazon and Google. Spaniards reach for fountains, cold drinks, fans and air conditioning as they try to cope with the country's earliest heat wave in more than 40 years, with temperatures surpassing 40 degrees Celsius in parts of central and southern Spain. The current heat wave equals the earliest one registered in 1981. Popular tourist destinations such as Sevilla and Gordoba, in which exceeding 40 degrees Celsius is not unusual during summer months, are set to reach up to 43 degrees Celsius in the coming days. A Cambodian-American lawyer and dozens of members of a now-dissolved opposition party were convicted of treason. Lawyer Thierry Seng and most of the other defendants had been charged over failed attempt by the leader of the defunct Cambodia National Rescue Party to return from exile in 2019. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any other stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other English. As we conclude tonight, let's take a look at the recently concluded free-running contest in Greece titled Red Bull Art of Motion. Have a good night.